Hey everybody, this is Glider Cat, and it's time to play. Today we're going to start a new Let's Play series on Transport Fever 2, as you can see here on the screen. Now I've played this game for about uh, three or four hours prior to starting this series, just to get familiar with the controls. I'm still not an expert, so I may stumble over some stuff. Uh, so there'll be a fair amount of learning as I go. Um, really got in the mood to play this game after the Voxel Tycoon series on the Glider Cat channel. Enjoyed the heck out of that. Would love to get back to that game. But uh, right after that, or towards the end of that series, is when I looked up Transport Fever 2 and put it on the list. And we're finally, finally getting to it. So I'm super excited. I played the a couple of the chapters, or maybe just one chapter out of the campaign here. Or not, maybe not even the whole chapter, but a few scenarios, I'd say. And uh, I'm not going to continue with that. I'm thinking what we can do is just jump into a free game. So let's do that. And I was looking through the different map settings. The key I'm going to use is a glider cat. That'll be easy to remember. And what I wanted to do was set up a map that had some water to it so we could make use of the ships or make full use of the ships and then potentially the uh, airplanes as well. Now I did play quite a bit of uh, Transport Fever, the first version of the game, or the first edition of the game. Um, I believe there was a Train Fever, maybe? Tran train Fever or something? Um, even before that. And I recall the planes being very, very difficult to make a profit on. But anyway, I think this is the map settings that I'm going to go with. I've got Hilliness kind of medium, Mainland set to medium. Tempted to put that higher. It's just... When I do that, I'll go ahead and do it. When I do that, it kind of, it seems like it seriously reduces how much, um, how likely we are to use the boats, right? That really chews up a lot of the map. I mean, there's still lakes and things, but I kind of want to be in a situation where we're somewhat forced to use the shipping to, to uh, make things work. So we'll see if that's a good decision or not. And then I just set the forest to medium and islands to maximum. We'll wait for this thing to generate. All right, so let's go with that. Oh, and then I've got the map set to very large. Uh, what is this? The buildings to very high and then are the cities to very high and the industries to very high. So it's showing us down here, there's 27 towns and 215 industries. That sounds kind of high on the industries, but I'm going to go with it. I think it's going to make things uh, potentially a little easier on us. Uh, and I've got it set to, let's see, next. I'm going to stick with medium difficulty and the start year at 1850. That's the earliest. There's some custom settings here. I think this is about mods. I'm not going to do any of the mods. Not planning on doing that. I'll go back. You can see here the climate temperate, vehicles American, town names American, environment temperate, and difficulty medium. I guess I can hit save. Okay. And let's just hit start. Boom. And get right to it. <clears throat> There's one more setting I'm going to change once we get in here. So we... Yeah, like I was saying... um. Voxel Tycoon, another awesome, awesome game. Somewhat similar to this. Uh, definitely different, but but in the same genre. Check that series out on the Glider Cat channel if you're interested in these types of games. That is a game you may also be interested in. So we'll just see. The other setting I'm probably going to do once the map generates is I'm going to slow down the... Um, the progression of time. So there's two settings around time. There's the game speed, right? Which is how fast everything moves. Your um, trains and cars and all that kind of stuff. And then there's the progression. That's kind of like how fast the technology evolves. So I'm going to slow that down because I remember in uh, Transport Fever, the first, the first one, I remember not being too keen on how fast things progressed. And I'm not sure if that, if that version of the game had a setting to slow down time uh, or technology progression or not, but I, I kind of wanted to do a playthrough just like in the 1800s or something and keep it there. And I don't think there was a way to do that in Transport Fever. Uh, there is in this game, we're not going to pause time, I don't believe, pause progression, but I'm going to put it down to pretty low. 
like one quarter speed. We'll see that in a second here once this uh, once this rolls out. Okay, we're finally here. Let's see. It says, welcome, provide the world with transport infrastructure it needs, and make a fortune with transport services. Watch your trains run on rails, your buses and trucks thunder along roads, your ships power through the water, and your planes soar through the skies. Carry people on their way to work or shopping, deliver the required cargo items to the towns, and be the reason towns grow and thrive. If you need help, click on the question mark button. It will provide you with further information on the menus and windows. Even easier is the entry into the game through the campaign. Have fun. Like I said, I did a few little sections or scenarios of the campaign. Helps you kind of learn the mechanics of the game. But I've been kind of wanting to just jump right in. Now, I'm going to pause down here at the lower right. And then if we look at the date and I click on this guy, that's where we can slow down the kind of technology progression or the date speed. I'm going to bring that not to paused, but just one up to one quarter speed. We can always change this. And what this is going to allow us to do is just work at each technology tier a little bit longer rather than building a bunch of trucks. And then the next town you start working on, you've got kind of the next generation trucks have come out and you need to upgrade the first ones. I want that to proceed a little bit slower. And again, we can always speed that up if we want. All right, now before we unpause the game, let's take a look at the map. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> so we've got, we're on the biggest map. We can see all the water is pretty prominent. So we're going to be using boats. There's a huge lake over here. We've just got one field here. See, man, that's not a city or a town. That would have been cool to have a town like that. So here's a town that's kind of on a little island. More industry. A town over here. Tons of stuff. Cool. Looks good to me. Let's now just take a look and see if we can find towns that require products that happen to be produced nearby. So here's one that actually looks pretty promising chattanooga one of the products that they want is fuel i believe i think that's fuel and we've got a fuel refinery here and we've got an oil well here so this might be a decent place to get started here on the bottom i guess this would be like the bottom left corner of the map but we could get some trucks delivering oil over to the fuel refinery here. I don't think we would bother using a boat. That's kind of a long trip. And then get that fuel into Chattanooga and satisfy that need, make some money and grow. Let's take some more lookies around. They also need goods. Now this is more of an advanced product. And I don't think... We've got what it takes nearby to do goods. Here's construction materials. I'm just going to close that little pop-up. A little hint there. Stone. And it looks like this is iron. I'm just scanning for other cities that kind of have that same scenario where they need a product and the factories to make it are nearby. This one, San Jose needs bread. And I see a farm. I don't see a place to make bread. There's a place to make bread way off here on this island, the San Jose Food Processing Plant, but that's kind of a long, seems like a long trip. I guess we could use boats here. Then we could get food into San Jose. Bricks don't look like they're close by. There's some over here, bricks. And then we need stone for the bricks. So I don't think that's going to work out for us. Let's just keep coming up this side of the map. Scope out the towns. Columbia, same kind of thing as uh, the town we were looking at first. They need fuel. I don't see a fuel plant or refinery anywhere nearby. And they need those products. The products take plastic and iron. And plastic and iron take two things each as well. So that's kind of a more high-level product, I think. A high-level thing to try and satisfy. Um, 
here in Spokane. They need, what are those little gears? Those are machines and goods. Not sure what it takes to make machines. I don't see anybody nearby that manufactures those. But that's a little bit tougher to do. To start out with, I think. Uh, here's an island with some industry. Too bad, that's a good sized island. It'd be cool if it had a town on it. It does not. Let's start here at the top and work our way back down. Bricks and what looks to be tools. Yep. There, oh, that's coal, not stone. Yeah, that's going to need a bunch of shipping. Gilbert, this guy needs tools and bricks. There's a plant for making bricks. That's coal. We have stone anywhere nearby. I don't see it. Yeah, that's coal. I don't see stone real close. Oh, there it is. There's some stone right here, actually. All right. There's a couple stone mine, a place to create bricks, and then Gilbert needs bricks and tools. How about tools? Are those nearby? Place to manufacture those? Uh, I don't see them. Now, did I rotate the map by accident? I think it did. We were where, <laughs> I think we were coming down this way. I'm not sure. Uh, Norfolk bread. Uh, boy, lots of farms. Plenty of farms. Boy, I tell you what, so far that first town actually looks the most promising to me. Eugene needs building materials or bricks. I'm going to call them bricks. I think those are building materials, though. Construction material. And bread. Bunch of oil wells here. We want to find something that's kind of easy to manufacture up front, I think. At least that's my strategy. Oh, we got a bunch of oil wells up here, right? And we've got... Oh, this has to be refined though. I think, yeah, there's three steps, right? There's get the crude oil, refine it, and then turn it into fuel. So this one's three steps for Carrollton. Do we have, we have tools nearby. Okay, that's a three step or two. That's got, that needs, uh, Looks like wood planks. We've got a place to do wood planks and we got a place to do wood. So this, these are longer production chains for us. And I don't know if that's a good thing. Maybe that means more money as we deliver the product. I'm not sure. But this Coralton looks promising. There's a fair amount of transport here that has to happen though. Is there oil? Oh yeah, we've got oil nearby. We can refine the oil. Send it up, turn it into fuel, send that there. And then we've got wood to planks to tools. And send that in. This looks pretty good. Now, where, where are we? Are we kind of in the central area. And this is as far back as I can zoom out. So it's hard to get a real sense for where that's at. Maybe kind of towards the middle bottom. Let's go for this. Let's try this. Let's try this. We've got iron mines nearby, a bunch. Not sure that we're going to use those. Um, yeah, now let's decide what do we want to do first. The fuel or the tools? Tools almost looks easier. Right? It's a truck route from here to here, a truck route from here to here, and then bring in the tools. Let's start, let's start with that. 
and we've got a five million dollar loan if you look here at the bottom left we're gonna have to pay interest on that and early on that interest is not trivial so i'm gonna come in and i'm gonna repay half of this right now just so i don't forget and then we're gonna build some stuff pay off whatever debt that we can <laughs> And then we're going to hit the play button. All right. So the first thing we want to do is get logs over to the sawmill. I think we just need to put down a couple truck stations here. We'll start with trucks. I'm down here on the build menu. I go to buildings. We've got the bus stop, a tram station. That's for like the uh, buses that run off of cables. And we've got a truck station. Kind of normal everyday trucks, a bus, oh no, a truck unloading stop. So this is if we just want to drop materials in town. We'll be doing that for sure. We got the road depot where we buy things, and we've got the tram depot where we buy the vehicles that run on cables. Let's do a truck station here. I want to kind of see how they're both getting highlighted. I think that could actually present a bit of an issue. I'm going to keep this close to where I intend to pick up the resource. So M and N, those are the keys to rotate. I'm going to plunk this down right here. Boom. And that's where we're going to pick up our wood. And in order to generate, in order for this factory to start producing wood, it needs to receive an order, as I understand it, like an order for this product. And the order, I believe, originates in, I believe it originates in the city. So we're going to ask for tools. That's going to generate an order from this factory for planks. This guy will receive an order, and so he'll generate an order for logs. And then this factory will say, hey, I've got an order for logs. I'm going to start producing them and plop them down at the nearest um, station, cargo station. So in this case, we're starting with trucks. I believe that's how it works. At least that's how I understand it to work. So let's do the same thing over here. We need a place to drop off our logs. Go back to the truck tab here, truck station. I kind of wanted it close without overlapping with that one if I can get it. I did try a strategy in my little kind of few hours playing where I put these real close together. They didn't have a, a much distance to travel. And it kind of worked. I had a little bit of a hiccup. But that could be a strategy where you want your trucks, you know, traversing the shortest distance possible for profit. But I'm going to blend that a little bit with realism and not put them right on top of each other. All right, this looks reasonable. It's close and it's within range of the sawmill. And this truck station is gonna be for dropping off logs and picking up planks. It's gonna serve both of those purposes. In fact, it should probably be more in the middle since it's gonna be doing two things. And we can look at the price of what it's gonna cost. I'm not too worried. A few thousand dollars one way or another isn't gonna add up to a whole lot long-term. Let's, we can rotate this a little bit to match the road and plunk that guy down there. Now we need a route. Let's do that. This is the route manager here, or line manager on the hotbar. I'll click new line, kaboom. And it says click on stations to add. I think it's already selected. Yeah, I got the little plus sign. So I'm just gonna say here and here. I don't need to specify the product. But I'm going to name this route. I'm going to name this logs. Hmm, I'm going to have to come up with a naming convention here. I don't think I need the road, but I'm going to put it there. Road logs and I'm going to logs to lower daily city. That's really what we're doing. We're taking logs from here and moving them to lower daily city. Let's, we'll start with that naming convention. We may change that up later. 
Okay, now I've got a route. Now I need to assign a vehicle to that route. And before I can do that, I need a vehicle. And to get vehicles, I gotta create a vehicle depot. And we can put those, I think, just about anywhere. So if I remember how I used to play, I used to kind of put the road depots just out in the middle of nowhere. I didn't want them to affect the ability of my town to grow. Uh, and I didn't want to crowd factories where I would potentially be putting um, cargo stations and things. So I used to put them kind of off far away. I don't see a good, so I don't want them super duper far away. There's kind of some dead space here. Um, is that a good strategy? Is that not? Surely I'm overthinking it. Let's plop it down. Tempt it in this little forest area. Let's see. Hey, here it is. Road Depot. They're not expensive. Let's pop it down here. Just kind of out of the way. Not impinging on growth, not anywhere where we would bother putting a cargo station, I don't think. We'll probably want to run a train like right through there and it'll be the biggest headache ever. Okay, so we want to get some trucks bringing logs over to there. So let's start with just two. I'm going to go to the vehicle manager here, bottom. I'll click buy vehicles. We've probably only got one we can choose from right now. I'll click on cargo. It shows me horse-drawn carriage. Let's get... Let's start with three of these. They show up down here as I double-click. Now, if I click on this little name circle, it's going to select them all. And then I've got some options here. I can set a line for them. I can sell them all. I can clone all of them. Every one I've got selected, I can just clone it, and it'll instantly purchase those. I can replace these. I haven't tried that yet. Or I can configure the maintenance. Maintenance, normal, running costs plus zero. Maintenance, high, maintenance, very high. Um, let's, if we just start out, let's start. We'll try to remember to use maintenance 25 or, hmm. I think this controls the upkeep of your vehicles, and that means maybe they slow down. I don't know. That's me speculating, so don't take my word for it. And I think I read somewhere that they have increased emissions if they're not maintained well, so more pollution. But then I think I also recall seeing that pollution doesn't matter too much as long as it happens outside your residential area. All of that could be speculation on my part, but that's what I heard. I'm going to go with 25 just for a default. Just because I don't want to think about it more. All right. So I'm going to choose set line. We, here's our uh, line that we just set up. Boom. So when we hit play, we've got three trucks that'll start delivering logs to our sawmill. Now we want to get planks from the sawmill over to the tools factory here. So we kind of know the routine here. Set up a truck station. We're going to drop off planks and we're going to end up picking up tools most likely from here. I guess we could do another station, but for the pickups, but we'll probably multitask initially. You put this guy on the other side of the road. Boom. And let's go ahead and create another route. This time, so I'm going to do new line. This time I want from here, here, and we'll call that planks, whoops, let's do road planks to um, Carrollton North, is that right? Yeah, Carrollton North, or planks to SSSSA, whatever that is. That's that one. Let's 
escape out of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, our main town is Carrollton, so that's good. All right, let's do the same thing. Let's get a couple trucks. We'll do three more. Select them all, assign them to planks. And now we need to deliver these into town. Now up here at the top left, there's a bunch of overlays that are kind of important here, data layers. We've got contour lines, which show that we're on a pretty flat map, it looks like. Not many contour lines to see there. We've got navigable, navigable waters. So this comes into play, like when you've got a little jut of water here, you want to make sure you can get through. That's where this overlay is, is handy. Then we've got land use. This is the one I think that we're most interested in. Cause this is going to tell us where the residential area is. And again, I mentioned this is where we want to be careful on the pollution I'm told. And I'm a little colorblind, so I may get these colors wrong. So if I'm pointing at the wrong thing, forgive me, but I believe this is the green residential area. <laughs> I believe. This is the industrial area. This is where we're going to sell our manufactured products or drop them off in town. And then this is the commercial area. And do we, what do we do here? I think we put bus stops and things here to drop people off for their shopping. I'm not sure if we drop products off in here or not. What we can do is click on one of these buildings. Oh, I guess we do. Look at this guy says he needs tools. Okay, if we click, click on buildings, we can see just what they're asking for. All right, all right. Let me back up, I'm learning something here. So if I click on the city or the town, it shows us what we need to supply. Here's the tools and here's the fuel, and it almost looks like that's per district, right? Again, if I do the overlay, our industrial area buildings, if I click on those, they seem to all want fuel. And our commercial area seems to all want the tools. So that's interesting. I'm just learning that now. And then the residentials, they probably just want bus stops or something. Anyway, very cool. So we're looking to sell tools. That's all in the commercial area. That's all down here. So we need a place to drop off that product once it's manufactured. And this is the, I think the structure that's actually going to generate the whole order and allow everything to work. So I'm going to do a truck unloading stop. This is a little confusing. It seems like it's highlighting all the area that's going to be within range. So it looks like almost everything, right? Now, oddly, the buildings closest by this little drop-off station don't seem to be highlighting, so I'm not sure what that's all about. And then there's a question, there's also a question of whether we want to put this on a main street or not, because this is going to block traffic. We could bulldoze. In fact, let's spend some cash and actually do that just just as an experiment. I bulldoze this guy. Just see. That's going to cost... Oh, man. That's not cheap. Uh, 150 grand. Let's not. We'll do that once we get some money. We're going to put a truck on load stop right... here. And hopefully that's going to cover the commercial area. Boom, it's only 1200 bucks. And now we need to route our tools into that spot. So we'll start with a line. New line. From here, pick up tools. Drop them off at our little stop. Boom. Then we'll go to the... Oh, we're going to need to name this. I'm going to call this one... RD tools into Carrollton. Boom. 
And then let's get a few vehicles on that. We're going to need more than three. Three is not going to be enough for all of this, but we'll start with three and then we'll start just doubling up. Vehicle manager, buy vehicles. Okay, we've done this before. Tools into Carrollton. All right, so now we should have a decent production line set up and we'll know right away if this is set up right because we'll see some logs start accumulating here. If it's not, we'll pause it and we'll debug. We still have 2 million left in the bank. We're going to be spending money on vehicles, but I'm going to pay off some of this debt because I don't want to pay interest on it. I don't have to. We'll leave ourselves 533,000. And then we'll hit play. Boom. And if we go to our truck depot, we should see a bunch of trucks coming out. Not trucks, but uh, <laughs> horse-drawn carriages. We will speed up for this. Let's speed up. In fact, we'll go triple speed. And then let's go see if logs are starting to accumulate over here or not. Okay. See the production thing blinking here in this production line. While we're waiting for stuff to happen, let's click on, if I click on the little question mark uh, here, it shows us about this window. It says the industry window shows the current production level as well as the growth conditions of an industry. Okay, the production parameter indicates how many units are produced per year. Right now it's zero. Then it says the shipment parameter indicates how many units per year are shipped to other industries or towns. All right. And then the transport parameter is the percentage of units that actually arrive at their destination. So things can overflow here at the cargo depots. Oops, we're at the wrong one. We want to look over here. There's our logs. Look at this. Already working. And we're already in trouble. Look at this. So, okay. We're at stations. Let's read what it says about stations. I'm going to bring this down a little bit because I know there's something we already need to fix here. The station window lists all lines that stop at the station. For each line, the number of waiting passengers and cargo items is displayed. Okay. Showing us right here, 113 or 14 units of logs are sitting there. If the vehicles cannot take all the waiting passengers or cargo, stations get overloaded. At overloaded stations, some of the waiting passengers or cargo items get lost. In addition, overloaded passenger stations have a negative impact on town growth. So that's something to keep in mind. We pay a penalty whenever we see this little exclamation point over here. It says some cargo items are being lost because the station is overloaded. But basically, especially when we're just getting started, that tells me we need more uh, trucks or carriages on this line. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to manage vehicle. I've clicked on one of the vehicles going on this route. I'm going to click manage vehicle. Here are all the vehicles that happen to be on this line. Logs to lower daily city. I'm going to double click this name. I've got all three selected. I'm just going to click copy. Boom. And I might even do it twice. We just got three more vehicles purchased that have the same settings. And I may do it again, boom, for three more. Now we've got nine vehicles on that route. We can always send them back to the depot if we don't need them. But let's, uh, let's get more trucks going. Here they come. Carriages, they move kind of slow. And I'm probably gonna do the same thing with these other lines. So here's planks. I'm going to pick that line this time. Maybe let's try now I'll do manage vehicles. Here's planks to Carolina North. I'll select all these and just double that. We have six and I'll do the same thing for this one. Taking the final product into town. Uh, I'll click on the line tools into Carrollton. Manage vehicles, select them all duplicate. And they're instantly purchased. So we'll see a bunch of carriages coming out of here. Now there's a couple other settings we can do. Right now it's not super obvious, but because we've got so many logs here, 
but we can come into managing. I think it's the line. Now we can say, how do we want the trucks to pick up? Like, um, this is showing that this particular line is assigned to terminal one. That was the other line. We'll fix that. We should probably split between the terminals. We'll see that in a second. But this one right here is the load settings. So for the logs to Lower Daily City, I want them to load, full load, any. So as soon as they're loaded up with any of the products they're looking to pick up, wait and then leave. Wait until you're full and then go ahead and leave. And I'm going to up the max stop time to like six minutes. It's just a personal preference, kind of an experiment, really. But it's basically saying you don't need to spend any time, any more time than you need to there. But wait for a full load if you can, so there's enough logs so you can travel with a full cargo load. And at most, wait six minutes and then you can go leave. That's what that's all about. Here, no filter currently set. Um, interesting. I guess. If you've got trucks, if you've got multiple products here at this terminal, you could set exactly what you want to be loaded or not loaded by this particular line. You could have multiple lines stopping at the station, picking up different products. So let's uh, not touch that too much. This guy got a full load, so of course he's going to leave right away. This guy has one plank and he's leaving with one plank. So that's what I kind of want to avoid. So I'm going to go ahead and click the line over here and do the same thing. Let's go to manage the line. Four planks they are going to get picked up in Daily City. I want this one to be Full load and go ahead and wait for six minutes or so. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's all set. That's logs. There's only one terminal there. This guy actually has two, two routes or two lines going into this station. And there happens to be two terminals at this station. But right now, if I go to terminals and see, we've got two. Oh, and it looks like it assigned one to one terminal and the other route, the other line, I guess I should say, to the other terminal. So we're in good shape here. That worked out good. I'm not sure how that worked out good, but that's just how we want it. So for logs, there's nothing really to configure here on this terminal. And then these guys are all queued up waiting for planks to be produced. That tells me we may have too many trucks, but we'll see once we get things in motion. Right now we've got, looks like an insufficient number of trucks here where the logs are. We'll probably be adding trucks here. And then that may take up the slack with these guys. They may start getting more product. If we can get more logs delivered, we might be shipping out more planks. Probably have a similar situation over here. We're trying, ooh, we have products here? We do. We've got tools. Being made. That's awesome to see. Four. These guys can only carry like four. Uh, that guy just came to drop off planks. And if we go into kind of the factory view here, we can see the production. I think this is for the course of a year, they said. Five out of a hundred. And if we can get these production lines up or get these get these three indicators up past this tier that has a little up arrow i think that's how we upgrade and they'll actually produce produce more product for us but i believe it's all based on demand if we come into our town and take a look it says <laughs> for tools we're supplying zero of 52 needed it's showing that Private transport is good. I guess that means maybe the streets aren't crowded or something. So we're getting a 10% growth bonus on that. We haven't really done anything for that. 
and we're not getting any bonuses yet on our supplying products. There at the bottom is the air pollution or emissions. So, so far we're good. We don't have a lot of trucks spewing out pollution in the residential areas. So they're happy. We're not paying a penalty. And overall, we're getting a 10% bonus and says the target population is 151 and we're just about there. All right, let's see how things are going. We clearly have many logs. Oh, what's going on here? Can these guys knock it in with their logs? Okay. Let's take a look at the terminals here. One. Blanks. These guys cannot get in. They've got logs and these guys are waiting on planks, but because the entrance is blocked, I'm not getting the logs in. So let's relax our requirement here on this line. We'll go in, manage the line, and let's rethink what I said. Lower daily city. Let's do load of available and just let these guys move on through. So that'll get this line moving. We're going to have empty trucks running around, but that will allow these trucks that are carrying the wood to actually get to their terminal. I think this guy has logs. One and two logs. This, this guy really wants to get to this terminal. I'm not sure why he's not just doing it. Okay, things are starting to move. That guy dropped off logs. This guy dropped off logs. Okay, here come the planks. I should pick up the planks. He didn't. Not sure why. We'll see if this guy does. This guy's on the plank route. Okay, he picked up the planks. There's a bunch more logs. We got things queued up. We're making a teeny tiny bit of money. Not much. Now, each vehicle, if I click on it, will tell me how much money they've made or lost. So this guy's lost $3,000. Just an operating cost, probably, because he hasn't delivered much. Same thing here. And then our log trucks, they are starting to make a tiny bit of money. Once they drop off the product. And let's see how we're doing over here. We don't have anything queued up here in terms of products, so I think we're okay. All right, let's at least go double speed and we'll probably speed things up more than that. But let's start out kind of slow, take it in. Okay, we're dropping off logs. We still have more than we can ship out. But we did have that backup earlier. We might need more trucks working the logs. Now let's check what the industries say. 12% okay, so far have made it to their destination. We've, we've been losing a lot. We haven't been losing 88%, but we've been losing a lot to just oversupply here. It's telling us that in this pop-up. So that's a big part of the game is getting that balanced. We will. This guy looks like it's doing good. It's not overflowing. There's some tools to pick up. Planks, the same thing. Looks like it's doing okay. It's not overflowing. That could change once we put more trucks over here. It looks like logs are the long pole. <laughs> I guess there's a pun in there somewhere. Let's add some more. So I'll click on the route. I'll click on manage vehicles. And there's a bunch of different ways to add vehicles. I'm going to add four more. I'm just going to select four of the ones I got and duplicate them. Boom. We just bought four new trucks. They're already configured for this route. 
They should be making their way out of the depot. There they are. Four new trucks. I'm calling them trucks. They're really... What are they? Wagons. Eventually, they'll be trucks as we move forward in time here. And then let's look at our city view. Okay, we've supplied two out of 52 required tools. Still at 0%. These guys probably aren't coming in fully loaded. Yeah, that's empty. That guy's empty as well. Okay, we are starting to accumulate some. Tools in a Carrollton. Okay, this guy's going to full load. This guy just dropped off plank, so he's going to go do that. We'll be adding trucks to this line as well to deliver these tools into town. In fact, it looks like it's starting to back up. Let's do it. Tools into Carrollton. Manage vehicles. Oh, uh, we've got six. Let's go for three more. We'll just pick three of them and duplicate them. Port note, not enough money. That's fine. We'll take a loan. Borrow another 500 grand. And there's the interest charge. You can see here's like, um, I guess this is supposed to be the first quarter, maybe five, six, and seven. So, uh, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four. I'm not sure why that says one fifty through four fifty. Like the first third of a year. Anyway, for that period of time, we paid $9,000 just in loan interest. That's what I'm trying to keep to a minimum. If we can, we still need to invest, right? You got to have money to make money. It's one of those things, especially in this kind of game. Now that we do, let's add some vehicles. And I've got three selected here still. I'm just going to click duplicate. And we'll have three more vehicles coming to pick up these tools and bring them into town. Boom. Cool. I think I'll end this episode right here. So we're off to a decent start. We're just using trucks early on. I think they are the cheapest to get started with. This isn't a hugely long run either. I think we're going to have plenty of opportunity to do trains on this map. And, uh, and obviously boats as well. Ships, airplanes. I think airplanes are going to come later once we have a good flow of cash coming in. As I said, as I said before, as I remember from the um, transport fever, the first game, they were super duper hard to make a profit on, but maybe that's changed in this version. But yeah, not a bad start. War analysis, Glider Cat signing off saying thanks so much for watching. Definitely like to hear your comments. Uh, so pop those down below. And if you like this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. That does help my tiny, teeny channel grow, and I would appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next episode.